the mouth-to-mouth -mouth portion. Because we're strangers or sometimes neighbors, people we know, but we don't feel comfortable giving mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, we still can help. So you tap and shout, send for help, and then just do compressions only. Now because you're doing compressions only, there's no need for you to count, for you to stop in between, nothing. Only if you get tired, you have someone take over, okay? Now we're gonna learn what's called conventional CPR, which is CPR for family and friends that we trust. We feel comfortable giving them out to mouth. Go ahead. My, my question is, let's say you are in a, in a very remote area where the possibility of a phone, phone or you guys might not get there. And you mentioned 20 to 40 minutes. I mean, at what time do you see what this is enough? I mean, 40 minutes, 45, 50 minutes. See, now we say, just keep we going say you. 20 to 40 minutes right. because we're in the house, out the house, in the ambulance, in the ER. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to take us more than 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how severe the situation is. However, you, on the other hand, if you do not call us first, how do we know to come and help you? Mm -hmm. when, are you when are the cavalry going to come in, right, and, and back you up? Well, I hope so. If you're here, we know that you guys cannot come. But, yeah. No, there is no we cannot come. No, 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 no. no, no. He, he said, he said, he said like, let's say, right, 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 in a mountain somewhere. Okay, I see what you're saying. In a mountain. You're supposed some, some real difficult scenario, right, where you're like, where you're like, up hiking in the woods and there's no 911 system there and no phone. Yeah. Then you are going to do your best. You're going to do CPR until you become exhausted and you're about to faint and pass out because. If you feel like you're going to pass out, stop. Because you're not any good, good. to you, nor to the person next to you. So there's a rule of thumbs that we, we give. There's three times you start CPR. One, if the person starts breathing on their own, right? Two, if help arrives, not only us with the patch, but someone else at home that now, now knows CPR. And three, if you're physically exhausted. It's impossible to continue. Okay? So you gave me your wrong. That's Do you it. know of uh, uh, any cases where someone uh, someone uh, came to the one hour afterwards? Who? An hour after the uh, back to CPR. Yeah. There's many mm. cases, but you know what? We're not letting that person uh, be in arrest for that long. We work fast. We work fast. Forty minutes for us is more than enough time. Like They're I said, that had to be a real bad scenario. See, the reason why I'm asking that question because I, I, uh, I uh, travel very often. That's good, and I go yeah. to very remote parts of the world where I know you guys can't come. That's why I'm asking the question. Well, so what if That's good. we go That's in and right. say, how long do you continue? An hour, an hour and a half? Uh, you continue minutes. because you know why? What you're doing is you're buying this person time. So even though they're clinically dead, you're, still them or you're keeping the body alive. You're keeping that brain alive, you're keeping the heart alive, and the, yeah, so now it's it's not dying. So, I mean, if, let's say there's three of you, right? One person goes into arrest, the strongest person stays behind to start CPR, and the other person runs for help. You keep going until help arrives. If you could, you keep going, because when that help arrives with a defibrillator, you'd be surprised if they may be able to bring this person back, and even after an hour. Drugs that, they that too. Um, directly to the heart or intravenously. Trust me, and if they're coming with drugs, they're coming with a defibrillator. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because the drugs are harder to obtain than a defibrillator. Right. All right, so now we're going to go into conventional CPR. In the first chapter of this DVD, you learned how to provide hands only CPR. It's a simple, life saving skill that you can use to help an adult who has suddenly collapsed until more advanced care arrives. Not all unconscious adults have suddenly collapsed, though, and many, like drowning victims, may have experienced breathing difficulty before collapsing. To best help those adults, you'll need to perform conventional CPR. Now, I'll show you the additional steps you need to know. We'll go through them a little at a time, giving you time to practice each step along with me. Keep your remote control near you so you can easily pause or replay anything you missed. Is your mini line still blown up as full as you can get it? If not, just pause the video now to get her ready. So let's get started. And don't worry about making mistakes. You'll get lots of practice. 
You've already learned the most important part of conventional CPR when you learn how to push hard and fast in the middle of the chest to perform hands-only CPR. Now you'll learn another part of CPR, breathing. That is, breathing for the other person. Watch me for a moment while I show you where to put your hands. Ease the head back with one hand on the forehead while lifting the chin with the fingers of your other hand. Okay, now you try that. One hand on the forehead, the fingers of the other under the chin. Be careful not to put your hand or arm on her neck, otherwise air won't go in and out. You'll choke them. Have you got that? Good. Now let me show you how to get air into the mini -am. Watch me again for a moment. Use the hand on the forehead to pinch the nose, not yours, and then completely cover mini Ann's mouth with your own like this. Now watch, don't practice. See, she opens her mouth wide, she's not giving a kiss. Now blow into mini Ann. <laughs> Breathe the air in for about one second and make the chest Continue rise. Continue to watch. Just because she comes down, she still keeps the chin up. And then you'll be able to see the chest rise. You'll know that the air is going to the right place if you see the chest rise. Another thing, look at the hand that's on the forehead. You're going to use that elbow on the ground to support your weight. Okay. Now, try that with me. One hand on the forehead, the fingers of your other hand under the chin, keeping your hand away from her neck. Pinch the nose. Pinch the nose. Cover Minnie Ann's mouth. Well, you hide. Ah. Uh, about one second. Got your chin up. Breathe out. Kind of like filling up a balloon. There you go. Good. A little more air. Perfect. See that? You didn't. Nice, nice. Working on that. If you need to see that again, back up the video to review what I just showed you. Okay. Okay, now let's try a few pairs of breaths to make sure that you've got it. You have to open her mouth wider. She's getting air in this. Okay, now just watch the screen for a second. I'm getting air now. Brown come out. Did you see Minnie Ann's chest rise? Good. Try it a couple of more times. Good, good. And remember to keep the head tilted. Now watch this. Her hand away from her neck and pinch the nose as you breathe into her okay. mouth. Okay, she's going to come down. She gives the first breath. You see the chest go up. She's peeking at the chest. Then she comes up, takes a breath for herself, and then she delivers the second one. So we're going to do that all together on my count. It's only two breaths, okay? Ready? 